Hi everybody, welcome to your sponge set of video notes. So for these notes, we're gonna first talk about the taxonomy, the general taxonomy of sponges. So this is our first real phylum that we will talk about within Kingdom Animalia. And the name phylum periphera simply means pore bearing. And sponges are animals. They are the simplest of all animals though. So a little bit about the characteristics of the phylum. So first of all, sponges do not have any tissues or organs and they are sessile which this word means they simply just don't move. So they move when they're, when they're juvenile still, but as adults, they don't move and they filter feed. And they are mostly marine. So saltwater sponges, these are all the sponges you see all the time. They're very brightly colored. There are, however, some freshwater sponges and these are typically a green color. Now let's talk a little bit about the overall structure of sponges. So if you notice, all sponges have these very large openings at the top. That is where water exits. So water is going to come out of these openings. Well, if that's where it comes out, where does it come in? Well, sponges have a bunch of little pores all over their bodies that let water come in and then it gets pumped through the opening at the top, which is how they filter feed. They bring in water, it brings in food and bacteria, things with it, and then the sponges eat that and flush the water back out of their system. So within the body structures, there are three different types that you need to know. So there's the ascon, sicon, and leucon. So the ascon is the most simplest body structure. So you see it's just a very basic single opening. You see the pores on the sides, and then water, of course, will go out the top or something called the osculum. Then we get a little more complex to the sicon. The sicon still has that general kind of like cup shaped structure, except you see a little more detail here with the different sides and where the pores are located. So water can actually come in a pore there and go out, or it could come in here, go out. Any of these pores are where water is going to come in and then exit the osculum. Leucon becomes the most complex. So this is actually a majority of sponges are the leucon body form. And if you see, this is very, very complex when you compare it to the other two. So anytime you see an opening, that's where your water is going to come in and then it goes out the osculum. And if you notice, this leucon sponge in particular actually has two osculum, so it's called an oscula because there's two openings. So water can come in any of these pores on the side and then go out the openings. So it's a very complex channel that you see going on with these sponges. Now that we've talked about the overall structure, let's talk about the sponge cells in general. There's four major kinds of cells that I'm going to ask you to know and understand where they are and what they do. So the first one is the panacocytes. So these just line the sponge and we're gonna, we're gonna coordinate to our diagram here. So these yellow bar looking structures, those are your panacocytes. I'm just gonna abbreviate, okay? Your porocytes then are the tubes where the water comes through. This is what regulates your water. So this is that orange structure here. That's your porocyte. Your amoebocytes are, are cells that just differentiate into other cell types. And they kind of look like an amoeba. If you remember back to freshman biology and amoeba, they're like these little single cell protists and they kind of move around with their little jelly inside. It's just like that. Those are your amoebocytes. So I'm putting an A there. And then your choanocytes, these are also referred to as collar cells. So all these red structures here that have like those single little tail, those are your choanocytes. So they'll put a C there. All right, so here's a different view of all those different cells. So you see your amoebocytes there. You see your panacocytes here, and those are flattened. The mesoheal we're gonna get to in a second. Ostea is a term for the opening themselves, but they're made from porocytes. So remember that ostea are made from porocytes. And then you have your choanocytes, which are your collar cells that line the entire inside of the osculum because that's where the water is going to come in and then those little tails move the water, they pull the food, and the water gets pumped out the osculum. 
So when we talk about the sponge body support, there's three different structures you need to be aware of. The first is the mesoheal. And this is just simply that it's non-cellular. So sponges don't have three tissue layers. So it's non-cellular and it's between the two sponge layers. So we're gonna go back just a second. So all this yellow you see here, minus the little triangle shapes, all the like light yellow, that's all your mesoheal. It's kind of like a cytoplasm in a cell, but it's in the sponge body itself between the sponge layers. The spongin is going to be that soft, flexible, when you think of a sponge or if you've ever found a sponge on the beach, when you think of that, the spongin is what gives it that soft, flexible structure. So it kind of looks like a big interwoven web there. And then the spicules, if you've ever been poked when you squeeze a sponge, or maybe you've touched some sponges that are a little more solid, Okay, the spicules are going to be what gives it that structure. So these can be spear shaped, star shaped, or any of these other structures you see here. And they're made of either a limestone or a silica. So like silica is kind of like a glass, so you'll get glass sponges, or limestone has, it has a calcium component to it. All right, so now that we've established that sponges are animals and they have all these different kinds of cells, we know they're filter feeders, but how do they eat specifically? Well, first of all, let's talk about what they eat. So they eat bacteria, they're going to eat algae, and they're going to eat other little water protists that are floating around that get passed through the pores into their bodies. So the food is going to enter that porocyte, and it's going to go to the choanocyte, which are the collar cells. From there, the food actually moves to a vacuole that sits at the bottom of the collar cell, and then the water gets pumped back out of the sponge. So if we look here, they have the little flagella. Okay, that's the little tail. You see the food particles or these little brown shapes here. And then you see your choanocyte. So it forms a food vacuole there, and it goes to the bottom of the cell, and then ultimately gets used for nutrition by the sponge. All right, so let's talk about how we get more sponges then. Well, sponges can reproduce both asexually and sexually. So when they do it asexually, there's multiple ways they can do this. They can do it through budding and regeneration. So we're gonna talk about both of those first and they're kind of similar. So budding is just a new sponge grows and once it's mature, it's going to separate. And you can see a sponge actually budding over here in this picture, that little knob coming off is a new sponge budding off. Regeneration is kind of similar, except for that portion would actually break off of the main body of the sponge and then it would keep growing in its own location. They also have these really cool things called gemules. So gemules are these little survival pods they keep inside their bodies and they're just there in response to a potential hostile environment. So if there ever was a situation where the sponge couldn't reproduce, it couldn't bud, it couldn't regenerate, these cells would survive. If the sponge died, they would survive and they can actually stay dormant for a really long period of time. Once the environment becomes favorable for, for growth, then they're going to start growing, eventually turning into an adult sponge. And these are simply amoebocytes, which are kind of like little sponge stem cells. They're amoebocytes surrounded by that hard spicule layer that protects them. All right, so we've talked about asexual, now let's talk about sexual reproduction. First of all, sponges are hermaphroditic, which means they have male and female organs, reproductive organs in their body. So they can make both egg and sperm but they don't self-fertilize. And the reason for this is because the egg is going to be produced at a different time than the sperm cells. And it's also different, different cells in their body that produce these. So if you notice the choanocytes produce your sperm and something called an archaeocyte produces your eggs and they will be done at different times. That way the sponge doesn't self-fertilize because if sponges are reproducing sexually, they're doing it for a reason because they want that diversity. And that's really important to understand here. The fertilization itself is going to take place in the mesoheal. So if you maybe wanna pause it here and look at this diagram, you see the egg being formed and then you see the sperm being formed from this other sponge over here. The fertilization, it comes in the porocyte and ends up in the mesoheal, which is where that fertilization occurs. And then here's just another look at sexual reproduction of sponges. Once again, another great diagram to pause and maybe you wanna sketch out or screenshot and glue down into your notes, but really great to label this as well.
All right, so we've talked about all the things sponges do. Now let's talk about how we even classify them in the first place. So sponges themselves are classified based on the type of skeleton they have. So if they have silicon-like spicules, that's your hexactinolita, which means they're like your glass sponges. Your demospongiae have silica spicules, but they also have spongin. And then you also have your calcareus, which are your calcium type spicules. So let's look at those in more detail. So calcarea, calcium carbonate spicules, and these sponges are mostly small. They're going to be very small sponges and they are strictly marine. You will not find these sponges in fresh water. Class demospongiae is what we typically think of when you think of like a bath sponge that was made from a real sponge, right? They have those silicon dioxide spicules and they have spongin. So they can have either one of those or they can have a combination of both of those things. And this is actually 90% of all sponges are in this class. And then lastly, your class hexactinolita, these are your glass sponges. So they have spicules made of silica and they're usually a six point or a lattice shape. And these are found in deep water. They are typically also a cup, a vase or an urn shape. So you see this one down here is in some really deep water and it's typically kind of up more like a vase would be. And that's all for your notes.